Bible reading, Isaiah 9, verses 1 to 7. Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed, as when at first he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward more heavily oppressed her by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in the Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For every warrior sandal from the noisy battle and the garments rolled in blood, will be used for burning and fuel of fire. For unto us is born, a, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Thanks be to God for his word. Our gracious and almighty God, we thank you. We can come to you. You are the one who dispels the darkness and you are the one who guides and directs each one. And uh, we pray, Lord, your blessing. And you are the one who can... Uh, take us out of the darkness in our lives and the sin and all the different problems that affect us. And we pray, O oh Lord, your blessing. But we do think, Lord, of those going through their trials uh, right now at this time. And we pray for uh, James. We uh, remember uh, Sharon and her mother-in-law in hospital. And we pray, Lord, your hand and your help. We pray, Lord, your blessing and your direction for her. We ask, O oh Lord, your leading, and we commit the whole family into your hand, Lord, and we pray, Lord, your blessing, especially in these closing days for Rosemary. We pray, Lord, your leading, we pray, Lord, your blessing, and we ask, O oh Lord, your hand upon each one, and we pray, Lord, that you will guide uh, in our lives and be with those who are in Zoom tonight and for those who cannot be in, Lord, we pray you be near them. We do bring to you, William, and we pray, Lord, your hand upon him. We pray, Lord, you'll heal and restore and help him. And we pray, Lord, your blessing and your strength. We thank you. We can bring it all to you in prayer. And we pray, Lord, your blessing and your enabling. We ask, O oh Lord, that you'll help us then to uh, find out something, Lord. This maybe is a passage oftentimes used at Christmas time but we know that it can be important at any other time. And we pray, Lord, that you will bless and guide as we look at it in a different way. We pray now in Jesus' name and for his sake and glory. Amen. Uh, some people are not uh, uh, worried about the darkness. They're on the mountaintop experience uh, and they are enjoying the great views. And that, that's great. Uh, not everybody can be like Ruth, you know, there, but uh, uh, here we are. And uh, uh, we're just coming to uh, seek God's help and strength. And in the days when people are, you know, trying to get out of darkness into light, and uh, uh, there's a terrible problem of it and uh, an awful uh, situation in our land and maybe in the world today, you know, and uh, the darkness and the doubt and the fears and the worries is really uh, a terrible hindrance to people. Uh, and the sad thing is, you see, that it, it doesn't help families. Uh, and, you know, uh, a suicide or whatever it might be, you know, it, it's of no answer. And they, oh, they have to really realize that uh, if they do commit, uh, go to such extremes, it, it, it's going to leave a greater problem for the families. The families sometimes don't get over it, and it is a terrible effect for them. And, and uh, anyone contemplating this, is, it's, it's really a terrible uh, problem for them. And so uh, the only hope is in the Lord and in 
uh, the great light that we're thinking of. And so let's uh, uh, continue here with this uh, great passage, Overcoming the Darkness. So it's great to know that there is, a, it, it, it can be overcome. Uh, and the darkness is, you know, that, that can uh, overtake us. And, and the important thing about it all is that we need to be more positive, to be positive. That's, that's important. We, you know, through it all. Uh, and be seeking, seeking help, seeking advice, listening to others and, uh, uh, you know, whatever is happening today and whoever might happen to listen to this uh, uh, little talk, you know, online, that uh, we hope that it'll be of some benefit to them because we are concerned for uh, the great problem in our land today of people who are in darkness and doubt and down uh, and given up in life. That is the terrible thing, you know, altogether. And so be searching. We have to be searching for help and for answers. And uh, to, to be to have an open mind, you know, that is great. Uh, if we have an open mind to learn and to listen uh, and to, uh, you know, maybe the instructions and the direction, not help maybe some people, but at the same time, it's, it's very important uh, to, to be open-minded and to be, be ready to think and, and, uh, and to... But there is answers, you see, and there is a great hope. Uh, and to be learning then, you see, too, as well. Because there is a lot to learn uh, for all the people. And those who are, are involved uh, in families and all that sort of thing. And those who are involved personally, uh, you know, who get, uh, who lose their way. And it's terrible when a person loses its way in life, loses the way uh, the, the will to live, you know, that's that's awful, you know. Uh, and the only way that can is is to get this great light. There's the great light. There's the one who's brought great light. There's one who is and is overcoming this darkness that's so important. And uh, you know, we were re reading there and. and uh, nine one. Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed. As when at first he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. Uh, another place that was in great darkness, you know. And afterwards more heavily oppressed her by way of the sea, beyond the Jordan in Galilee of the Gentiles. So that area is highlighted. But maybe you could highlight it your area or your country or your town or your village, whatever it might be. It doesn't matter where it is. It's still the same effect. And it's overcoming the darkness uh, and uh, all that, you know. So why the preparation? Well, let's think about that. God does not want us depressed, distressed uh, and gloomy, you know. But we, we, we can get like that. And that can happen. And, and it can be so terrible. I know a third of one man, and he was in a real dark pit for a long time. But the, the great light, God took him out of it. The power of the Lord Jesus Christ, the great light of the world, came and took him out of it. Uh, and he became a, a much a new person, a great ability afterwards, you know. And... Uh, then there is, uh, you know, is Israel has a great problem, you know. We're thinking of Israel's problem. We're thinking of the problems in our land and they're trying to fix all kinds of things and they're trying to help uh, uh, all things, you know, and the, the health um, the, mental, the health situation, the mental health. Uh, they're trying to help uh, in, in different ways. And it's, it's, it's not at all easy, uh, you know. They have... Uh, uh, the failure of slouch care, uh, and they're trying to, to help in this. This is really dealing with the whole uh, health situation and the, our land, you know, and uh, the hospitals and how it can operate better. So, uh, Sennacherib, the Assyrian, came down like a wolf to the fold. He was, he was really overcoming. He was really wanting to be, well, he was really... Uh, a world a leader, a world empire leader. He, he was the, the leader in the world then, you know. We talk about those who are leaders. They said China is coming up to be the, the next great uh, uh, world leader. 
uh, and uh, and so uh, there it is. So he was that, you know, uh, and he was coming down to uh, the fold. He was really, uh, what really meaning was he was taking over nations and countries uh, and he was overrunning uh, Palestine and other different places to take over them over, you know, and uh, he had uh, Jerusalem under siege. Well, the Assyrian army died suddenly. In the whole plan and purpose of it all, they suddenly just died. Couldn't believe it, that the whole Assyrian army was lying dead, you know. And here's a poem here to, to illustrate it. It's the destruction of Sennacherib. That was the, uh, the leader of Assyria. By George, Lord Byron, George Gordon. It's based on, on this um, Isaiah chapter 37 and 36 and 37. And so here it is. I'll try and bring it across to you. The Assyrian came down like the wolf on the fold. And his cohorts were gleaming in purple and gold. And the sheen of their spears was like stars on the sea when the blue waves roll nightly on deep Galilee. Like the leaves of the forest when summer is green, that host with their banners at sunset was, were seen. Like the leaves of the forest when autumn hath blown, that host on the morrow lay withered and strewn. For the angel of death spread his wings on the blast and breathed in the face of the foe as he passed. And the eyes of the sleepers waxed deadly and chill, and their hearts but once heaved and forever grew still. And there lay the steed with his nostrils all white, but through it there rolled not the breath of his pride. And the foam of his gasping lay white on the turf and cold as the spray of the rock-beating surf. And there lay the rider distorted and pale with the dew on his brow and the rust on his nail. And the tents were all silent, the banners alone, the lances uplifted, the trumpet unblown. And the widows of Asher are loud in their wail. And the idols are broke in the temple of Baal. And the might of the Gentile, unsmote by the sword, had melted like snow in the lance of the Lord. And so there it is, a great poem by Lord Byron. Uh, it's really highlighting the uh, victory uh, over the Assyrian army as they lay dead outside the city of Jerusalem. And so Isaiah 9-2, the people who walked in darkness, and they were certainly in great darkness, have seen a great light. And those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has dawned. And so we're, we're not dealing in this passage leading up just for Christmas and all that it is, but we're thinking about it as a great encouragement to help us in our times of depression and doubt and fear and worry. And so we need the great light to deliver us from the darkness. And that's the answer I'm given to anyone who might happen to chime in, anyone who might come uh, and look at this, you know, uh, and I hope they'll not just turn off, but they'll see there is hope. Which they'll see there is an answer for them, and there is a, a way out, whatever the problem uh, might be. So, can a nation defy itself against the enemy? Well, they might try. But, of course, that is a big thing, defeating the enemy, you know, and it is so. Isaiah 4. For you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressors, as in the day of Midian. 
uh, verse 3, and shared the plunder. Right. Well, I wonder what's that all about. Well, Midian was defeated. Uh, there was a mighty army of Midianites, and they came up. And, of course, a great man, uh, Gideon, uh, with, with direction from the Lord, defeated them. Miraculously, too, the Assyrians would disappear. They disappeared in a miraculous way. Uh, we, they couldn't. The people in Jerusalem were bobsmacked when they looked out and saw the whole army dead. And uh, Sennacherib, away back to uh, Nineveh uh, and uh, Asher there too. And of course, he was killed by, assassinated by his two sons. How can our darkness go? How can it be dispelled is the question for us. The only answer is this great light we're thinking of here. This great light that's come, come into the world. This great light that came uh, over, uh, what, 2,000 years ago. And this great light, this the answer and the hope. And how can our darkness go? We need a good counsellor, don't we? We need a counsellor that understands the darkness and the situation and the enemy that we are against. And an enemy of our souls is so, so terrible. Uh, and we need to be warned about it. And we need to trust in the Lord. Uh, and uh, we need people to, be, to know that there is an answer. And so the great light is Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. He said, uh, you know, that was the great thing he stood. He said, I am, meaning that he is the answer, he is the one. I am the light of the world, you know. Anyone who comes to me, you know, he has he come that he'd, he'd dispel the night, you know. And that is it. Uh, and so that is so wonderful uh, that he is the great light. We try many remedies and they fail, and they won't help. Worldly remedies can help for a time, but the real help is this great light, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, who came. He said, he said he was the light, you know. I am the light of the world. And uh, we are to come to him, we are to put our trust in him, and to believe in him uh, that he can dispel the darkness and the doubt and the fear and the worries in our hearts and in our lives. He's the true light and will not fail you. That is the great thing, you see. Uh, Counselors can only do so much, uh, and they don't have a real answer, and they can't tell you what to do, you know. And uh, they might make suggestions, or they might leave you to decide yourself. And so can you overcome? Well, in, in verse 5, for every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle and garments rolled in blood will be used for burning and fuel for the fire. You know, that is the en end of that, you see. Uh, what is it? How is it? Well, there's victory there, of course, but does God hate religious wars? Because that's what was happening. It was a religious war, you see, and he hates religious wars. Cain was judged for starting a religious war in his day. It was really a religious war. It was uh, that his religion against his brother Abel's religion. Uh, because Abel was listening to the Lord and doing his will. But Cain was doing what he thought was right. And it's the same thing has gone down, all down through the edges. You can be an overcomer. So what is God's answer? In uh, Isaiah 2, he shall judge between the nations. Because God is interested in the nations. He's interested in you, in your country, where you are and what you are doing. And rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. 
And in a sense, maybe that's difficult for you to take in, but that's the answer. You see, he's saying he's going to bring about the end of all this conflict and all these problems. And he is the answer for all your doubts and fears and worries. Uh, and there are people who are trying to have all kinds of anti-war demonstrations and this goes in the past, but they have no answer. But God is the God over all. And you see, there's a day coming when there'll be total peace in the world. A new world with peace. And uh, we cannot bring it about ourselves because this one who is the great light will bring it about. And we need to trust him. Why this great promise? Well, you see, in Isaiah 9, 6, that great one we, we quote and Christmas cards and all the place, you know, for unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders, shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And so he is the answer. My friend, you might say it's a lot of balladash. I, I, I don't believe it. But this is the answer. This is God's answer for you. This is God's answer for wherever you are. And if you're going to tune into this uh, later on online, I hope that you will keep on listening and thinking about this one because the answer was there 2,000 years ago and you see he's going to bring about the peace in the world that because he's the Prince of Peace, it says there. And so he knows how to do it. If we follow him, we listen to his voice, if we turn to his word and listen. He is, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's only through Jesus. You can't come on your own terms. You cannot come any other way. Um, you can't pay a million pounds. It's no use because he's paid the great price for us of our sin on the cross of Calvary. He's opened the way and we can trust and we put our faith and trust in him alone to save us. Well, finding great answers, eh? Why this plan? Well, in verse 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever. It's the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And so he's speaking about peace. He, he's speaking about a real future for you and for me. Uh, and I, I thoroughly believe it. I came to trust the Lord many years ago. And I, um, you know, know that he, his promises are yes and they're true. And they will be fulfilled. Because all the promises that was given in the Old Testament and uh, way back old times have been fulfilled. And uh, we can uh, know of a surety uh, and we can put our faith and trust. And as the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Do trust him. Do put your faith and hope in him. He is the only answer to today. And so overcoming the darkness. Yeah, we have a big, there's a big thing about the darkness. Uh, and we go out and uh, uh, in the darkness of the morning to, to have, um, you know, these, these walks and these runs <laughs> and these gatherings together. But, you know, here is the one who can overcome it all and help. You not have to get up early in the morning before the light and come out and march and talk and, and meet and put in, have lights, you know. It may be think they can help some people, uh, and especially the thinking about those who are suicidal, those who are given up on life, and those that don't really think, you know, about it all. They don't really think about the, the harm they're causing. 
and the harm that caused on their families and friends and loved ones, and maybe children who are left. Oh, they never get over it, you know. And it's awfully sad. And so the great thing is, you see, before it's too late, come to the Saviour. Uh, the great song was, come to the Saviour, make no delay. There in his word, he's shown us the way. And so he's shown us how we can come. We can repent and put our faith and trust in him alone to save us, to deliver us from these uh, problems and doubts and worries and fears. Oh, yes, I know many people have some great problems, you know, to overcome. And the only answer is through the Lord. And so we pray that God will help you. And we ask, oh God, your help and strength. We pray, Lord, your blessing. And we pray, Lord, your leading. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the great light, that you are the light of the world. And we thank you, Lord, that you will help us to be a light in this world for you. We pray in Jesus' name and for his sake and glory. Amen.